We are very familiar with the, with the regulations. We work with them every day. Uh, and, and so, yes, uh, anyone that would have questions about lot splits, uh, you know, I believe that we could um, sit down with them and explain. And once they tell us what they, they are really needing to do, then we can tell them what the requirements uh, are uh, to break that property into, into two parcels. Anything over 10 acres in size, and actually in the county you can go down to 10 acres in size, um, and as long as you provide adequate easement for access and utilities, um, they're, they're not, there's no uh, approval process that, that has to be followed there. Probably one of the things that we run across more often than anything on the rural properties is uh, people buy a piece of land and it's representative, represented as say 10 acres or 20 acres or 40 acres. Uh, and the survey uh, defines the actual boundaries of that property and the acreage may not be exactly what the deed said it was and of course a lot of deeds say more or less. Um, Typically, the, the public will sort of key in on that acreage more than anything else, and acreage is actually the lowest priority as far as how to define the boundary of a piece of property. So in the rural areas, um, that's something that, and I, that, that people need to be probably most aware of, is that because your deed says you're buying 10 acres, there are other parts of the deed that will control the boundary that, that it may not be 10 acres, it may be more, maybe less. And that's one of the things we, we run into quite often. Um, within smaller residential uh, platted subdivision areas, um, something, something that folks will sometimes question is uh, the original subdivision plat may say that a, a lot is 100 feet wide. And then we go out and do the survey and if we recover the original monuments that were set on in that subdivision, it may be 98 feet or something different than 100 feet. And they, they will question why, why is it this original plat says it's 100 feet and your survey that you've just completed it says it's 98 platted subdivisions. Um, the dimension that shows on the original subdivision plat um, is what was um, originally uh, measured. Um, but if we recover those original monuments that, that define the corners of that lot, they will take precedence. And so sometimes people will question why the original subdivision plat says this is 100 feet from here to here and your survey is showing 98. It's because we recovered those original monuments and they take priority over the dimension that's called for on the plat. If we can uh, really honestly say those are the original monuments that were set when the subdivision was platted. So those are, those are a couple of questions that, that we run into uh, pretty often in, in people asking uh, about surveys that we do. Part of that is due to the original survey that, that I spoke of that was done in the 1800s. Um, when the original survey was done, the boundary of what we call the townships was, was surveyed, which is a six mile square, six miles on each side. And then later they came back in and started breaking out the one mile square sections. And as they got, uh, the, their instructions said, uh, you would work from the southeast corner to, up to the north and to the west. And so the, the tier of sections on the very north side of a township which is sections one through six, uh, they came up the standard half mile from the south side of the section and when they, and then when they went on to the township line, um, if there was any error in that township survey, the, they pushed it all into that last half mile. And so they're, and the same thing over on the west side of, of the township, the six sections over there. And so that, that if someone says, well, I'm buying the northwest quarter, northwest quarter of section six, which typically is nominally 40 acres, as you get into the survey, or even if you look at the original plat that was done in the 1800s, you may see that it's something less or something more than, 
40 acres, and that's the, the long and the, the long and the short 40s that you're talking about. Then the other thing is just simply the, the, the equipment that, that have, that's been used prior to the electronic equipment we use now it was, especially in this part of the country where it's very hilly, could have some significant errors. Uh, in the measuring of those lines, so that's that's another factor that would enter into that. I would have to say it's false. <laughs> um, you know, I've never seen anything um, written that would quantify how much more or less. I mean, I've seen a few extreme situations where someone bought uh, 40 acres, what they thought was 40 acres, and it was in the, 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 those areas of the township where I said that they shoved the, whatever air they had. And, it, and it, when it was surveyed, it ended up being 20 acres. And so, um, you know, I'd like to say, I, I would say that, that you can't really quantify how much that more or less is. Yes, um, of course, we, we land surveying. Um, we're also a civil engineering firm. Um, we do uh, water and sewer and streets. Um, we do what's called site plans for commercial properties. Um, if you're working in the city on a commercial property, there's, uh, or, or a residential subdivi subdivision, there's requirements for stormwater detention. We also do uh, materials testing, um, which is testing concrete. Uh, someone pours a footer for a commercial building or slab we can test the concrete to make sure it meets the architect's required strength and soils testing to make sure that the compaction for the soil under that building is gonna hold up that, that it's uh, where it needs to be. So uh, that I also designed septic systems, um, which in the old days we used to always call them perk tests. Uh, now we use a different method called soil morphology. Perk test is still a valid way, but most everyone in this area has gotten away from uh, the, the actual perk test and they use the soil morphology. So those are some of the things. I mean, that's pretty well covers uh, what we uh, what we do at Consolidated Land Services. I'm at uh, of course area code eight seven zero four two five six one six one is our number. I have an email uh, address uh, which is clsi at mtnhome.com. We are a little bit behind the curve, I guess, as far as the website goes. We're, we are just now starting to, to get into that. We haven't got one um, set up yet, but um, we, we do. You can contact uh, through email or um, you can fax us 424-3884. Um, be glad to try to answer any questions um, that someone would have. Um, you know, I. Um, I don't know it all, but uh, if I can find the answer, I'm more than happy to try to help someone.